Are you? All right, we're going to talk about metabolic disease again. You can't see uh, my lips moving with a face mask, but listen to me. All right, anyways, so we're doing a weight loss surgery, but we're talking about metabolic disease, and this is pretty interesting because what we're trying to do with this specific patient and with any patient we're treating here is the treatment of metabolic disease. Now, you might say that you're not interested in metabolic disease, but it would so happen that 88% of the U.S. population has metabolic disease. A recent study that was started out in 2009 and ended in 2016 looked at people in the U.S. and they found out that 88% of the people in the United States, adults, are actually metabolically not fit or unfit. What does this mean? This means, quiero, quiero ver imagen, porque si no, nomás me están viendo a mí y, ok. Entonces, al revés, pásense para acá, de allá para acá, para que vean esa imagen. Pueden ver esa, pueden ver esta. All right, for those of you, I'm doing some directing in Spanish, but anyways, uh, you can see inside this abdomen, there is a lot of body fat. So what am I doing now? I'm using a stapling device. Um, to divide the stomach and in fact make it smaller. But anyways, metabolic disease is basically, if you ask yourself what is metabolic disease that is so rampant around the United States and the rest of the world for that matter, it's when your insulin starts creeping up and you show signs of your blood sugar elevating. And when that happens, you're considered a diabetic. Now, your blood sugar may not creep up, but there are other tattletale signs like heart disease. So, 50% of the U.S. adults have actually heart disease. And again, that is directly dependent on metabolic disease. There are some other things that can happen when you have metabolic disease, and these are the symptoms of the disease, which includes the elevation of your cholesterol, of your triglycerides, of your blood sugar, like we said, of your blood pressure. Now, all these things are going to lead to chronic disease and then are going to lead to probably shortening your life. Unfortunately, the fact is that in the U.S. and the rest of the modern world, this is treated with medication with no hope of improving. In other words, these medications just control metabolic disease. They control your diabetes, your high blood pressure, your high blood sugar, your sleep apnea, but it never reverts it. What are the three things that can revert metabolic disease? Here we go. This is the big secret people have been waiting for. Intermittent fasting. Did you know that if you actually perform intermittent fasting, you can resolve metabolic disease? The other thing that controls metabolic disease and reverts diabetes is a low-carb, high-fat diet. That's already been proven. In fact, I've got YouTube videos of my patients that reverted in seven days from being a chronic insulin user, 60 units a day. On the seventh day, he had to remove all insulin because his blood sugar normalized. And how did we do it? by telling him to stop uh, eating carbs. Simple as that. Eating, stop eating carbs and increase your fat intake. And last but not least, surgery improves these metabolic conditions. So in this case, what we're doing is we're removing part of the stomach. By the way, people ask me, if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. People Oh, we're doing a reduction of the stomach. In fact, for that person that asked, right now what I'm doing is I'm pulling part of the stomach from the abdominal wall. And it's been pulled. We're using these trocars. Basically, these are instruments.
and we've just pulled out the partial part of the stomach so we reduce the size of the stomach so this stomach is now smaller and this patient is going to be able to eat less food and because because a patient is going to be able to eat less food they're obviously going to lose weight but there are some other mechanisms that actually cure the metabolic aspect of uh, of the disease which includes the reduction of your cholesterol in days sometimes it takes two to three weeks for the reduction of the cholesterol to happen so right now we're going to keep on doing some suturing this is a version of a surgical procedure that we designed called the improved gastric sleeve which is a we believe to be a much better version of the normal procedure, the conventional procedure, because we've addressed problems that happened in the past uh, with the conventional procedure that we've seen, like uh, frequent heartburn and the durability of the procedure. So in fact, we've seen a great advancement using this technique that we developed here with Dr. Martinez. And since he's right here, he can tell you what are the three things that we do differently now with this procedure. Well, uh, first of all, uh, what Dr. Ortiz is doing with the suture is enfolding that staple line. And that does two things in itself. One of them is it prevents leakage. Uh, anybody who researches the sleeve will always be wary of a leakage because it's the most talked about complications. Uh, of the sleeve, so we're really happy to say that in our primary gastric sleeve cases, we've never had one, and uh, it has to do with this technique. The second thing that this suture allows us to do is to micro-calibrate the procedure. Micro-calibrating means that uh, we can go a little bit closer to the calibration tube if we need it to, to have an adequate size. And now, in turn, that prevents the stomach from overstretching or over dilating. Dr. Martinez, we have a question. Sure. Can some, something similar be done on a previous gastric bypass patient 10 years ago? Uh, well, no, because it's a different procedure. Uh, a, a gastric bypass can be tuned up. Uh, you can place a band in some centers. They are reverting a bypass, converting it to uh, some other form of more aggressive bypass. but. Uh, what we've done here over the years is pretty much uh, add restriction to the patient. That is the first thing that is lost when a patient gains weight. So we wind up adding restriction by remodeling the pouch or by adding a gastric band, which a lot of people hear negative things about bands, but when it's done for a patient who had a previous bypass, it really works well to provide restriction, and it's a restriction you can modulate as time goes by. So, so um, in maybe to uh, produce a little bit of hope for that person that asked the question. Yeah, we see a lot of bypass failures. The bypass is prone to fail. It's a procedure like any weight loss procedure that has a certain life, lifetime, but unfortunately sometimes it fails. And when it fails, well, patients are going to either experience more, uh, uh, le less ideal symptoms or, or side effects that they don't desi undesirable side effects or they don't lose as much weight or they actually regain the weight that they lost. In this case, what we do is we designed a program called uh, addressing failed procedures. And basically what we do is we rescue these procedures. And this would be a bypass rescue and it entails, as Dr. Martinez mentioned, the remodeling of the pouch, which at the end of the day, I'll ask the patient who's a candidate I'll just ask them, if I gave you the restriction you originally had when you, your surgery was first performed, do you think you would lose weight? And the answer is usually yes. Patients say, well, yeah, if you give me that original restriction to lose weight, of course I'm, I mean, original restriction to eating, of course I'm going to lose weight. Well, that's what we do. We go ahead and go back in, do a quick surgery, remodel the procedure, and what we find is patients lose weight again, and they're happy, and they, we get them back to... Uh, an ideal metabolic status. So right now, what we're doing is we're proceeding with 
the suturing. And since this is the whole team, I'm going to let uh, Dr. Rodriguez finish the procedure while we explain the last part of what we're doing. So anyways, this patient will finish the procedure in the next five minutes. It's been around 20 minutes of, of a procedure. But what the patient is going to experience is a quick recovery, 30 minutes in the recovery area, a couple of hours, get her walking around. And it's interesting, in the next three weeks, her blood sugars, her blood pressures, and all the different biomarkers, including cholesterol and triglycerides, are going to resolve. So it's interesting how a small procedure at this point, after 25 years of doing weight loss surgery, has such an incredible impact, not on weight loss, not only on weight loss, but on metabolic disease. All right, well, thank you for watching. We're direct from OCC, live from the operating room every day. See you tomorrow.